Ashley with BroadwaySpotted.com, and I'm speaking with Matt Sachs, who is the composer and co lyricist and also stars as the clown in the public production of Venice. How are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm very good. How are you? I'm fantastic. We just saw Venice, and it was phenomenal, so you need to get down here and see it ASAP. And it just got extended, right? It did. Till when? Uh, we are extended by now until June 30th. Awesome. So get down here. Sort of asking you, where do you generally draw your inspiration from? Do you get ideas from? Well, it's all, it, every show is kind of a little bit different, but Eric and I got the original idea for this show. Um, we were offered a commission from Center Theatre Group, which is a theatre out in Los Angeles, and they, we were doing, I did a one-man show before this called Play, which is a one-man hip-hop musical, and um, they uh, were so excited about us that they wanted to do something else with us, and they asked us to do something, and we kind of came up with this idea that we wanted to do something kind of based on Shakespeare, something kind of based on world events, also leaning from the lessons that we learned uh, through the one-man show that we play. And, you know, it's like, how do you marry this type of music with this type of story and, uh, you know, hopefully create something new. So that's, uh, that's been this process. And it's been amazing. And it's been kind of like this five-year journey. And to be here at this very moment in my hometown. Represent. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's amazing. It's like a total, total gift. And I'm really lucky to be here. And speaking of play, tell me a little bit about that because you also wrote that. I think you started it as a one man show. Yeah. Right? So tell me about how was that? Is that an interesting experience? It was awesome. I mean, it was. <laughs> the advice that um, a lot of people give young actors is you have to start writing because, you know, you can give yourself your own opportunities. And I was in college and uh, no one was casting me in any production, so I decided I was going to write my own show and it happened to be play and then it happened to. Uh, exist for five years and um, that was never the intention for me. It was always the goal, but, uh, but that was an amazing experience. And, you know, the opportunity to both be on both sides of the table is a really fascinating one. It's really cool to both be maker of thing and, uh, and performer of thing. I mean, it's a very, it can be a really tiring thing, but it's a really rewarding thing too. Where would you say you first found your passion for performing and just the theater world? As a kid, I was really, you know, I grew up here in New York and I was really, really lucky. My grandparents and my parents took me to, uh, to all sorts of musicals growing up and I uh, could sit on the edge of my seat and just like think about how I would do each part and uh, like, memorize them in my head. And I was like such an intense little kid. Um, and so that was, you know, the, kind of the start of it. And then as I grew up, I started listening to different types of music, different styles of music. And I realized that writing music was a real passion. And, uh, it was through that process of writing play that I started to learn how to write music, and uh, this has been a whole different experience. And that was with play, it was just me, and it was just rapping, and now all of a sudden we have people, and they're singing, and um, and it's awesome. But it's been it's been a really interesting experience to marry those impulses that I have, both from the hip hop world, the music theater world, the um, you know classic rock world, like all of these swirling influences kind of coming together to create hopefully something new. And I think the exciting thing about the style of music, the style of performance, is that it feels very of our generation in that we don't see genre boundaries and genre lines in the way that a lot of people, a lot of older people do. You know, I think it's a lot more fluid in our generation, in our culture. And so the ability to marry all of these different impulses to create this thing that we're making feels uh, very of right now. I, I did read in Playbill that you don't actually read music, you just no. kind of follow your impulses. Yeah. Tell me how that kind of works, are there advantages or disadvantages yeah. to that, do you think? I mean, I don't think it's any better or any worse. I think that I was very empowered uh, to start making music because <laughs> someone said, like, oh, you should write a musical. And I was like, never one to back down from the challenge. I was like, yeah, I can do that! Um, and I had no idea what I was thinking. And it's kind of taken the process of these five years um, to learn how to write. And it's true that I don't you know, read notes on a page. I don't think there are any like specific advantages, specific disadvantages. I think it's true that I don't um, have any very particular music training, but you know, I've listened to music my whole life, and I, um, I have strong impulses. So the way I create music is I started by making beats on the computer, like hip-hop beats, and our process is I will make the music on my computer, I will sing over it, and then give it to 
Curtis Moore, who is our collaborator, and he'll put it on the page so that the actors can, can read something. In the very first uh, incarnation of this project, I would sing, you know, I would come into rehearsal and I would sing it to the actors and then they would sing it back to me and then we would record it yeah. to remember what we did. Um, but now we're like... You got it now. You yeah. got it. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about how you and Eric started working together. How did that collaboration kind of start? Yeah, so I uh, I was a junior in college and um, I had just gotten back from Edinburgh where I did this one man show. And I did it back at college and we had a, a common professor that we both uh, uh, that we both worked with and we both really adored. And we actually went to the same school years, a uh, few years apart. And um, he came and saw the show and he, I guess he liked it, and he came up to me after the show and he said, I would love to work with you, can I help you however I can help you, I would love to uh, be a part of what you're doing, and the two of us started collaborating on that show, and that was like eight and a half years ago, and we've been working together ever since, and he is you know, one of my best friends in the world, he's very much like a brother to me, and uh, you know, we are two sides of the, uh, of the same mind. So, with your role as the clown in the show, it kind of allows you to be on stage with yeah. all of your actors as the story kind of unfolds. How is that from a creative perspective to kind of see your story from the stage? It's really interesting um, being you know, on the outermost frame of the story and yet being directly in the center of it at the same time is a really interesting experience. You know, I'll sit and watch the show on stage and Eric will sit and watch the show from the audience and uh, you know, the two of us afterwards will compare notes of what our experiences were like. And it's been really fun. I mean, it is lovely to be with such a talented and amazing group of actors and performers and dancers who you know, bring such life and such vitality to every moment of the show that I feel really lucky to be on stage with all of them and feel like, wow, like in no other world would someone cast me in a show with all these awesome people. So I, you know, did it myself. Speaking of casting, how yeah. did you, how was the casting process? What were you looking for specifically with these amazing yeah. Well, it's interesting because some performers have been with us since the beginning. The Amelia character, Victoria Platt, has been with us since uh, the moment we started working on this thing. And, um, you know, and then most recently we added Jen and Haas and Leslie, and the three of them are amazing. And, you know, throughout the course of the process we've had different performers come in and, you know, inspire us in the way, the way that we like to write and the way that I like to write in particular is I really like to write for people that are going to be doing it to kind of uh, give them their their best shot to, um, to allow their best selves to come forward and uh, that's been a really fun process is working with these amazing people and really writing specific songs and specific uh, melodies that fit right in their, right in their pocket that's been really fun. Yeah. And then for the final question we have from that, since the show I feel like there's just such an inspiring message behind it. Yeah. What exactly do you hope that audiences take away from this? What do you hope they implement in their everyday lives? I think that's interesting. I don't know that there's one specific thing. I mean, I think there is a very um, specific mission. Mission. Bloopers. That's you know, we're good. Uh, I think there's a very specific uh, message of hope and change and the need to not repeat the same mistakes that our parents have made and uh, the opportunity to grow up. I think all of those things are true. But the real thing is, how do we give people that first time experience? You know, when I was a kid going to the theater, how many experiences do you have when you see something for the first time and it absolutely changes your world? I mean, theater and musical theater in particular can be such a transformative, uh, amazing art form that you can walk in uh, one way and walk out and your heart is completely different. And so, for me, if we can give some kid that opportunity to be able to come in and feel like, wow, theater can be this, performance can be like this, um, and they're inspired to get involved, that's obviously something that, uh, that would be great. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Be sure to check out broadwayspotted.com for a review of Venice, and be sure to get down here to the public to see it before it closes on June 30th. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.